All right, meeting four, June 2023 conference call. Uh, this is going to be a good one. And as you see on the uh, meeting outline, we're going to go over SoFi, SoFi technology, which we did go over in the very first conference call that I did. And there's been a lot of great things happening with the stock. Uh, we've been making a lot of money off it. And so I'm excited to go over the updates for what it should uh, happen, what it should do in the future. We're going to get into our electric vehicles, EV actually green. Um, and so, you know, I'm not against uh, electric vehicles per se, but I, I am against the people who believe that uh, their uh, EVs are changing the environment and they're they're actually green. So I'm going to get into that that myth today. We're going to get into steel makers to benefit from increased EV production. Um, there's always a quote that I, I look back towards for investing, especially when it comes to the uh, gold miners. Uh, back when the gold miners were moving west, you know, like California and whatnot. There is an investing uh, quote that says, you know, the the gold miners themselves weren't the ones to, to get rich because they didn't know if they were going to find gold or not. It was the ones who sold them the picks and axes. It was the ones that sold them the tools. So we're going to get into that when it when it uh, when we talk about EVs. So what are the, the tools? What are the picks and axes for the EV market? And that's steel. And even deeper for steel, how do you make steel? Coal, coke, what they call coke making. Coal and coke making provides deep value opportunity for EV push, transition. We're going to get into the data capital dividend portfolio. The top two performers, the bottom two performers, and honorable mentions. I have a couple uh, stocks that I added to the dividend portfolio, and they've done well thus far, even within a bear market. So this is going to be a jam-packed one today, um, and I'm excited. So first, the SoFi update, SoFi Technologies. So news has been coming out um, that student loans should resume in October 2023. And this is big because a lot of students that went to college, um, they took out a lot of loans. And whether, uh, you know, people believe that uh, student loans should be paid off or not, that's really not up for debate. And that's not really... Uh, what what uh, I care about, I have student loans, but what the goal is, how do we position ourselves to profit off it? And I think if you're a student, you have student loans, um, a good hedge is to, uh, you know, invest in SoFi, which has a great refinancing plan for, uh, for students. And they also service a lot of um, well-to-do students who have professional jobs, who should be able to at least make um, uh, student payments, all right? And so one of the first decodes I want to get into is SoFi Tech, Inc., student loan free finance, refinance equals 331 in English ordinal. You see that's that 33 in front. You have that one in the back. When using the parent of number rules, that's just 33. Very powerful. We have uh, what also SoFi CEO, Anthony Noto, he sees... Uh, SoFi via two business loan uh, uh, branches. They provide direct private student loans and also that student re uh, loan refinancing. And what he said in the last conference call is when interest rates start to go back down, people are going to want to refinance. And that's more money into the company's pockets. So again, this is a great hedge for people who may have student loans so how can I how can I get some of that money back when those payments come back whenever they do in October? You invest in SoFi, and um, also have SoFi stock student loan refinance equals two thousand and twenty two in English Sumerian. That's important. Sumerian's an ancient cipher. It's based off sixes. And think of Saturn. Banks have a lot to do with Saturn. So that's what we want to see. And Noto said when we saw the rates were low is that our student loan refinancing business really benefits as people can refinance their federal loans into lower rate loans and capture savings there. So that's a big product that this bank has to offer. It's going up the leaderboards as uh, one of the top banks. I think it might be in the top 20 right now. It could also be a buyout option for, you know, JP Morgan, BlackRock, uh, Bank of America. Now, I don't believe they will uh, take a buyout offer. But if they do, it's going to be a lot higher of a price than what is currently at, at 828. And um, also, 
breaking news, Kathy Wood, one of the more premier uh, female investors with her ARK Invest in Portfolio and her ETF, she recently added over 200,000 shares of SoFi to her ARK Invest ETF. And so that's big. And a lot of people who follow Kathy Wood, whether you believe she's a good investor in tech technology stocks or not, she's a big player. And people like following big players into companies. All right. And so that but that's why we were here first. That's why we were here before anyone else. And some Gematria add SoFi shares to ARC ETF. Kathy Wood equals 333 in English ordinal. That's powerful. Kathy Wood. Add SoFi shares to ARK ETF equals 137 English reduction. That's the 33rd prime. And just for some context, if, if you remember what we went over in the very first uh, conference call in March, the price I got in initially around $6, but it was about at $5.70 at the time. And I continue to say, if it keeps going lower, I'm going to keep adding because it's getting close to its fair value. It's under its fair value. It's lower risk, higher reward, and it's been paying off. If you see at the uh, bottom of the screen, you know we have I have 300 uh, shares of SoFi currently right now. My average cost per share is five dollars and sixty-two cents. That's due to me averaging down constantly, and so we're up forty-seven percent right now, and we're up almost eight hundred bucks. It was a lot higher. Because as you see on the chart, it got up to over ten bucks. So it was over a thousand dollars. We were uh, we were up on the on the company. I'm not selling any shares anytime soon. This is a long term play for me. But this is the power punch. This is the power punch. This company has people are starting to, to see. People are starting to have it on its radar. So we got to uh, so we got to stay smart here. You know, if it keeps lowering, it might be a good time to add. But I think it's a nice hold for where we're at as a, as a community and it's paying off and I'm happy. Um, so we'll see what happens later on in Q4 when they start bringing in more revenue because more revenue means higher stock price and people are going to get even more excited. So we're at 50% gain right now. That could be a hundred percent gain. Imagine the stocks over, you know, 12 bucks, 13 bucks, 15 bucks. You know, it got up after its IPO, it got up to 25 bucks. Imagine having a share price of five sixty two, with a with a current share price of twenty five dollars. Um, so this is where I'm just holding. I'm staying firm, staying put, and we're gonna go from there. So that's just a quick update on SoFi. I'm very happy where it's going thus far. So into the 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 context of are electric vehicles uh, EVs actually green? Uh, I don't believe so. And so what the first Gematria decode I want to go over is electric vehicles aren't clean or green, but provide a new industry in world market. That's important. The world, Earth in general, throughout history, which I've come to, come to understand, they don't necessarily want to fix any issues. They'll just put a Band-Aid over it so they can make more money off it. Because great example, the crock pot. The, the crock pot is a really great device. Um, when it first came out, everyone had a crock pot. Now, the, the, the CEO, genius. But unfortunately, right now, they're going through bankruptcy uh, uh, proceedings right now. Um, and they're losing money, so they have to restructure. I don't think crock pot's going to go out of business, but they have to restructure their business. And it's crazy enough, when you think about this world, crock pot is losing money because they made too good of a product. The product is way too uh, 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 durable. It's way too good. It's not breaking down on people. So people have crock pots from when it started, the company started like 10 years ago that still work perfectly. There's no money in that. And that's why they're in bankruptcy proceedings. It's not that crock pot was a bad product. It's a great product. But the, the CEO on his path making a good product, he forgo he forgot how this matrix really works. You know, if it's too good, you lose money because you need to keep people coming back for more. They try they've tried other products like air fryers and stuff like that, and they might try to keep continuing that.
but their base product is too good, not making enough money because everybody already has one. And so that's the, what to keep in mind when it comes to emerging markets and industries. They just put band-aids on it because when it breaks down, they can sell you another one. And so let's get into some of uh, if, uh, if it's not actually green or not. Building an EV generates more carbon than building a car powered by an internal combustion engine because the process of extracting, processing, and transporting minerals needed to make the batteries. So the whole, when you look holistically as the process for making an EV, it's still very pollutive. Um, a lot of the minerals that we mine in China, Australia, South America, very pollutive uh, due, due to get it out of the ground, and it's not good for the environment. In one example, the Argonne National Laboratory model compared the Tesla Model 3 Model 3 and a Toyota Corolla purchased and driven in the United States, where coal, coal power makes up nearly a quarter of all electricity generation. In comparison, the Tesla had to travel had to travel 13.5 uh, 13 thousand 13 miles before it surpassed the Corolla. That's a year or more of driving for most people. And so for to get that green return for the Tesla Model 3 compared to a Toyota Corolla, it took over a year. Now that's just one study. There's other studies that have other uh, differing opinions. But uh, on the same line, there's other countries out there who have greener uh, industries, who have greener markets who have better sets up, setups than the U.S. So the benefits arrive sooner, sooner for drivers in a country with greener electrical grid. In Norway, where hydropower is king, the Tesla Model 3 overtakes the Corolla after 8,400 8, miles. That's in Norway. You know, they're based off hydropower with water. So they're a lot more greener than the U.S. and other nations. So Damien Ernest from the University of Leeds claims that an EV would take a, would need to travel between 67,000 and 150,000 kilometers, which is 41,000 to 93,000 miles before the break-even uh, uh, point occurs for that, that green break-even point. So there's a lot of various, uh, there's a lot of various uh, views out there, but it's not like, you know, you just buy a car, you're instantly green. And American Petroleum Institute's website notes that various uh, types of powertrain configurations emit similar levels of greenhouse gases over their lifetime. So we're really not escaping the environmental uh, uh, issues. They're just giving uh, consumers another thing to buy. And some, some more gematria, the American electric vehicles market is not as clean or green as the media exclaims it is. 333 English ordinal. You see the powerful uh, uh, decodes here. Another one. The Asian EV market will keep EV industry from being green or clean due to the coal usage. In China and Asia, over 60% of their uh, electric generation comes from coal, which is over double of what America is. And a lot of people consider 25% being high. In Asia has it has the biggest um, increase in EV production. I don't think they're too worried about uh, you know environmental environmentally friendly electric vehicles. They're just trying to get the money. The Asia EV market is not that green and electric vehicles aren't clean or green equal 333 in English ordinal. The Gematria is saying it saying it all. Making of EV not clean, as media says, 303 English ordinal, zeros value placeholder, we have 33. So in my opinion, again, if you want an EV, that's fine, but don't virtue single, uh, signal anybody thinking that you're saving the world because you're not, you're just playing the game within the matrix like everyone else. So just keep that in mind. Tesla, Tesla, Teslas look cool, but they're, that, that's pretty much it. It's just another car. So let's get into steel makers to benefit from increased EV production. Now, think of all the steel body frames on cars. That's a lot of steel. Think about what it takes to build a, a skyscraper. That's steel. Many other different products, you know, pots, pans, stainless steel. Steel's not going anywhere. 
So again, to the concept of, you know, you don't necessarily want to be the, uh, the, the gold miner out in the rivers trying to get the gold. You want to sell the gold miners the picks, the axes, which is usually made with steel. And so according to the World Auto Steel, so far steel is winning the emissions race for structural materials used in cars. Steel has the lowest carbon footprint of any material used in the automotive structures. Primary, primary steel production emits 7 to 20 times fewer greenhouse gases compared to other materials. That's always been fact. You know, all these different rare metals out there, they're cool to use. We can do a lot of different things for them. But time and time again, old reliable steel has came up to have less carbon footprint. The Steel Recycling Institute, SRI, a business unit of the American Iron and Steel Institute, released a peer-reviewed uh, study that examines the overall environment impact of vehicle light weighting uh, using advanced high-strength steel, AHSS, compared with aluminum. So this new product that's coming out with steel makers, advanced high-strength steel, this still has all the qualities of, you know, good, proper steel, but it's lighter weight. So with these electric vehicles, they're not being weighed down as much. And that, that, that's a good competitor to aluminum, which a lot of people don't realize. Aluminum is one of the most uh, environmentally dangerous metals to produce out there. And with its lightweight qualities, though, a lot of automakers were trying to transfer over to that. I don't think that's necessarily going to work over to the long run if the goal is to stay uh, cognizant with, uh, you know, the environmental, social, uh, and greenhouse gases, the, e the ESG movement. And so some gematria with that, high strength steel used in EV, aluminum not as green as steel, aluminum not green inside cars, all equal 303 in English ordinal. Remember, three value placeholder, 33. Then we have metallurgical coal is needed for steel. Met coal, they, you can call that for short, 330 English ordinal, 33. Electric vehicles need steel frame, advanced high strength steel in EV. Steel is much, steel is much greener than aluminum, all equal 137 in English reduction, 33rd prime. So the gematria is telling us the tape, and that's why we follow it, you know, and, and it's simple decodes to put in. You know, we're not doing anything crazy. You know, you type in simple phrases, and it lets you know what the deal is. AHSS, Advanced High Strength Steel, Intensive Vehicles, had lower or equivalent total life cycle of greenhouse gases, GHG, emissions than aluminum intensive vehicles for every class of vehicle tested. Advanced high strength uh, steel intensive vehicles were shown to show have lower life cycle GAC emissions versus aluminum intensive vehicles more than 90% of the uh, 5,000 cases study. So out of 5,000 cases, 90% of them have showed that, you know, advanced high strength steel is a lot better than aluminum. And this comes from and each vehicle type too, you know, SUV, truck, uh, minis, like compact, motorcycles. And this comes from uh, life cycle greenhouse gas and energy study automotive light weighting. That's the case study. The study further highlights that solely focusing on tailpipe emissions will likely produce unintended consequences of higher total greenhouse gas emissions to the atmosphere when considering light weighting of vehicle body enclosures. So if you try to get a lightweight vehicle via aluminum, you're not doing anything with the environment. You know, you, you could say the tailpipe emissions are going down, but everything before you even get to that tailpipe emissions is going ex extremely dangerously up. And as you see, high strength steel for new EVs equals 331 English ordinal, 33. And that big investment number and reduction, 133. So you see that 33 connection. We want to be in the places that have that high strength steel that are making that product. 
Aluminum is not as green when compared to AHS steel inside cars, 3033 in Latin, 333. The increase in result of the significant differences in emissions between AHSS and aluminum in the production phase of the materials. The increased production emissions for aluminum can outweigh emissions reductions in both the driving and recycling phases, according to the SRI study. Comparison to AHS steel aluminum not green inside cars, 3,300 in English Sumerian. Steel is the only material critical to allow low carbon technologies like wind, solar, and power generation, batter, battery and fuel uh, cell-based electric vehicles, and hydrogen production. Very important. And the two biggest steel producers in America are Cleveland Cliffs and U.S. Steel Corporation. Cleveland Cliffs equals 133 English ordinal, and U.S. Steel Corporation equals 1,033 in Latin gematria. So you have those investment numbers of 133. Highly important. Now, you might ask, well, does that mean we're going to be investing in Cleveland Cliffs, U.S. Steel Corporation? Maybe in the future. I don't necessarily see them as a good risk-reward opportunity right now. They're going to stay around for the company, as the company. But again, we're going to get deeper into that, uh, that coal miner pick and axe um, scenario. Because I don't necessarily see an opportunity to make a lot of money off Cleveland Cliffs and U.S. Steel Corporation stocks right now. They're kind of uninspiring, but they buy their products from a key source that uh, in a stock that we're investing in right now. And when we get into our data dividend pack, we'll, we'll go over it. And I'm really excited. But moving forward, as we get down into the line of it all, coal and coke making provides deep value opportunity for EV push transition. So let's go over the advantages of coal. And again, it's not like I'm, I'm trying to uh, propagate or promote, um, you know, the greenhouse gases, uh, coal emits. I'm in a situation where I am just trying to find opportunities to make money and see the world for what it is. I'm not on a high horse. I'm not trying to uh, persuade any, anybody's way on where we where the earth can go can go. Um, there's a lot of way, there's a lot of things we can do in our personal lives and in the community to help the environment. Instead of complaining what the larger powers that be that do, you know, you can take action in a lot of ways um, in your own environment. And that's where it is, that's where it matters. Um, so when it comes to stocks and stock market though, it's a different story. That's a bigger game. And if you want to play, and if you want to play to win. You're going to have to, quote unquote, you know, sacrifice maybe some, some uh, you know, environmental morals. But some advantages of coal and why it's not going to go anywhere, even in the future, if uh, we're totally electric vehicles, right? And they're trying to make a lot of uh, cars within the next 15 years completely electric. We'll see about that. But the advantages of coal, huge, huge global reserves. Not intermittent, uh, not an intermittent energy source, reliable fuel, inexpensive energy source, independent of the weather, plenty of applications, compatible with other energy sources. It creates jobs, reduces dependence on oil, it's easy to store, smokeless alternatives, convertible to various formats, minimal waste, consume, uh, consumable byproducts which, you know, you, you use coal in different ways, whatever byproduct it, it emits, that's another product that you can use later down the line. Low capital investment, outpull, out, output is controllable, com comparatively safe in regards to people aren't really dying a whole lot uh, when, when trying to get it, like some other rare metals and some dangerous mines. Obviously, it does have some dangers, but there's even greater dangers out there with other metals and such um, in processes. Simple burning process and risks are easier to mitigate. So those are the, a lot of the advantages. There's a lot. And so there's obviously a downside to it as well. There's disadvantages to the coal. 
non-remo- non-renewable source of energy, which means, you know, it takes millions and millions of years to produce underground. So if we mine too much of it, it it's going to be uh, up used past our lifetime. You're not going to get uh, a lot of coal uh, compressed, compressed and uh, made within 100 years. You'll maybe get like a speck of coal. It needs millions and millions of years to be produced. So if we over uh, mine it, the, uh, the, the, the inventory is going to go down a lot. It has environmental impact. It 100% does. It's not, it's not uh, that um, safe for the environment. It's just not. I'm not going to beat around the bush. I'm not going to say it's the worst option we have, but it definitely hurts the environment. But so many other things hurt the environment, right? So you essentially, you just have to pay to play. Um, destroys natural habitats. The coal mining impact, obviously, there's, there's people that have cancers, uh, lung issues, breathing issues from being coal miners, goes back centuries. Um, you know, it's one of the, the, the very important jobs in, in the industrial realm uh, in the 19th and 20th century, especially with Andrew Car- Carnegie uh, ramping up coal and uh, ramping up steel and whatnot. Potentially radioactive, um, you know, impact on the miners' health and displaces human settlements. So those are the advantages and disadvantages. Um, in this life we live, there's pros and cons to everything. We just have to make the best decisions we know how. Now, when it comes to the gematria, very powerful stuff. Bitumous coal, U.S. energy fuel. 333 in English ordinal. This is bitumous coal is the biggest source of coal in America. It's run it runs America, and that's why you see that 333. That's almost what America has been built on for the last 300 uh, years. EVs are in, indirectly powered by coal, and coal won't be canceled during EV push. These two both equal 333 English ordinal and 162 in reverse reduction. Very powerful. Coke industry will thrive in 2024, 333 English ordinal, 331 reverse ordinal. Um, the Coke industry is when you take when you take coal and then when you uh, process it, you take the carbon out, um, you, you uh, take all the pollutants out, you have another byproduct, which is called Coke. Now, that's what you sell to the steel makers and stuff so they can make their their steel. So when I say Coke, I mean the processed version of coal. Coal, Coke is deep value in ESG's movement, 333 in English ordinal. The Gematria is telling us Coke is still going to be used for the ESG movement. We still need it. And Coke making stocks will be deep value, 330 English ordinal, 33. We see it. Coke making Pluto and Aquarius, which we're in right now, and best steel comes from coke making. They both equal 303 English ordinal and 114 English reduction. It's not going anywhere. Don't believe the media. Don't believe your neighbor that thinks he knows what he's talking about and has a Tesla. He doesn't. He just didn't do the research. He saw Elon Musk was building some cool toys, and he wanted one because he wanted a status symbol. That's all. That's pretty much it. They didn't do any research. All right. But the Gematria tells us Coke fuel equals 330. Coke fuel equals 33 English reduction. Simple enough. We like to see that. That's a simple decode. 33 reduction. Coal will be used in green movement. 133 English reduction. Again, we're not switching off the path. 133. We know that's a positive investing number. And that's why this phrase is very important. Coal will be used in green movement. That gives us security in finding those coal stocks as we move forward into the new world. It's not going anywhere. Coal coke production is still very important for the electric vehicle industry. 333 English reduction. Bada boom. Coal stocks are low risk, high uncertainty, with Pluto in Aquarius, 222 in Septenary. That's the uh, holy biblical cipher that's based off seven. 
that's an ancient cipher you'll see in the, uh, the Bible, in a lot of Bible texts. So I thought it was important to bring up because this is kind of like a biblical time that we're going through right now. America and Asia's energy structure will keep uh, coal use alive with electric vehicle push. That equals 333 in English reduction. So you see the energy here. You see the powerful gematria here. That's why we're doing it, all right? And it's been paying dividends off thus far. And when it comes to paying dividends, let's get into the data divvy pack. And so, honestly, I think we've been doing really well thus far for the data dividend, uh, data cap dividend pack. We've been di diversified a lot, which has actually helped our safety net. Being that this is a portfolio that I want to keep growing over time, I'm not, I'm not risking, I'm not going to make it as high risk as I would my own personal growth stock portfolio. The goal is to not lose money, but to slowly gain money over time and be paid by these companies over time for that compounding effect. So we're not necessarily going for those bangers of plays, having those 100% gains and, and whatnot. That's not the goal with this uh, portfolio. The portfolio is to get in good companies at the right time so they can pay us hefty dividends and that we can grow. I plan on keeping this portfolio for a long time. Years on years on years as we keep doing these conference calls, as I keep growing my own YouTube channel and my own financial community, we can always look back to where we started from and how and how these companies have been going and, and whatnot. And so, uh, man, we have 15 companies in the data divvy, uh, divvy pack right now. I'll probably get it up about 20. And so I don't plan on adding any dividends uh, companies after uh, this month. I'm going to let it ride out a little bit. The market's looking kind of shaky. So if and I've, I'm always looking at different uh, companies to add, but I'm not going to just jump into one because I only have about five spots I want left to add, all right? Um, because you do have to balance diversity with uh, position, uh, power, and management, all right? You need some, some good weight in a position to get better gains, but with diversity, it helps with safety as well. So it's a balance, balancing act. But man, ANDE, that biofuel uh, company is killing it right now up 20%. We got three shares. We've been paid in dividends a little bit. We got AOS still at the top, still at the top, 50% um, up. I don't think I'm adding any more right now. Um, it's really, it's PE ratio is about 40X. So it's trading about 40 times what it actually makes. I think we got in at a good price at 60. If it gets below 60, I'll probably add again, but um, I'm very wary of stocks that are above P ratios of about 27, which is the S&P 500 average. And uh, we got in at a good price and it's doing well so far, but that doesn't mean I'm gonna continue to add. HMC, Honda, doing good as well. We got in this one last month and we're still up 15%. So that's good. Um, and so the couple other ads that we're gonna get into, and I have a small presentation for them, is SXC which I got a couple shares below seven bucks, but I did add around the 7, uh, 90, 780 range, which is why you see cost per share around uh, 725. But I added this last month. We're already up almost 8%. And I added BHP. It's an Australian-based uh, mining company that deals with the coal. They have a lot of business with the Asian market. So I saw that connection there. If Asia is not uh, moving away from coal with the EV market, well, I got to find the companies that are supplying them to, so they can make their EVs with steel and, and whatnot. And so I got in at 55 bucks. It's at 59. So we're up um, about 6% and it has a hefty dividend. So those are the couple of good notables that we're up on right now. Here's some of the ones we're still down on, which is okay. We have LNC, which we talked about in the March, uh, uh, the March conference call. And I'm still high on this one. I'm still very high on this one. It's starting to even out with our cost per price a little bit. We're only down 2%. At one point, we were down 20. But it's been finding that range. I love the dividend. We have a third of an extra share right now, which is great to see. Gold, doing all right. I don't think I'm adding any more to gold. We have a good amount right now. I'm just going to let that build up over time. 
I've been adding to O. That's uh, the Realty, uh, Realty uh, Monthly Dividend Payment Company. Love that one because it's it's a monthly dividend. And so we have five shares. So that's actually getting a lot of our portfolio right now. Um, ICL, it's a chemical company. I have 30 shares of that now. I bought a lot, really cheap prices. You see what's happening in the world right now. These type of companies usually get retrofitted. If we actually hit a World War III, I feel like this company could be doing something uh, special with its chemicals and, and whatnot. Again, I'm staying out of the, the moral uh, basis of things. We're trying to make money. I'm trying to make money for the community. And UAN, um, which, you know, we're down a lot on this one, only, but it's only 40 bucks. But this one's so volatile. It's at 80 bucks right now. Our cost per share is 93 but it could be $100 next week, and it could go back down to $80 next, uh, the week after that. But we're really into this one because it has a high dividend. It has about a 20% dividend where we stand right now. And so, shoot, we're getting like 10, 10 bucks, 20 bucks every time it, it issues a dividend. And so that's why you see only off only three shares, we have almost 40% uh, of an extra share. And so maybe next time around, we can have a full share just based off the company paying us. And so right now we have about uh, $2,500, $2,500 in the data dividend pack, which is great. We're growing. I'm still always putting money into it. And, and you know, and uh, thank you off top world for still supporting because your money is going into the dividend pack. You know, I'm not uh, wasting it. It's not going to, uh, you know, frivolous things. It's for this, it's for the company. And right now, we have we have a positivity of seventy dollars and eighty six cents on the positive gain side to our ninety five fifty three, and so there's a difference of a negative uh, twenty four dollars and sixty seven cents. That's pennies. That's me and immunity school. And again, that could change really quickly. And that could change really quickly just off UAN. If UAN wanted to go to just a hundred bucks, things would be looking a lot different. And as you see, the S and P five hundred, uh, the Dow Jones, and the Nasdaq have been down. And we're kind of we're kind of in that downturn right now. So I'm always looking for discounts. Um, so again, I'm not really looking to add any dividends right now. I don't really see a whole lot, but there's going to be a, a potential new addition in July to my growth side, which I already um, which I already presented to the the Discord community is highly on Holdings Corporation, uh, NYSE stock ticker H Y L N. Um, it's a company that deals with uh, trucks and getting them to hybrid fuels and uh, EV eventually. But it uses hybrid fuels with their technology, with their drivetrain. So say if they can't, if these vehicles can't get gas or diesel for some reason, they can use ethanol. They can use other fuels. Hydropower is a, also an option. Electricity is an option. Um, and this company IPO at like 50, 60 bucks is sitting at a dollar sixty right now so but that was two years ago so and right now it's sitting uh below its fair value so its fair value is about 216 it's trading about 160 and in my head that's a no-brainer so that's what the dip data dividy pack is looking like right now i'm very excited and very happy with where it's going uh so sxc sun coke energy inc this is the company i invested in uh uh in, in in June, I told you guys in the May in the May uh, conference call that I would be doing this, and I did. I got shares under six bucks. I have eleven shares right now. The cost per share is seven dollars and twenty-five cents, so we're up decent. It's a coal coke producer, headquarters in Lyle, Illinois. The PE ratio is seven point two five, which I like. You know, it, it's right where it needs to be. The dividend yield is uh, four four point thirty one percent. The debt to equity is under uh, under uh, uh, one at 0.896. I like that. And this did update. Uh, they did show about 21.07% of the float was short interest. Uh, and now I think it's about 10. But I didn't update it. That's what I had at the time. But still, it's still very high. Because people are short in this stock because they think coal is going somewhere. But they don't know. They don't have the gematria. We do. So that's short interest. That's just that's fuel to get us back up into this range, the $15 range, the $25 range. That's fuel. And that's what I can see in the future for this. So we buy low, we sell high. So for some gematria, we have Suncoke Energy, 
Pluto and Pluto and Aquarius, 133 English reduction, 155 reverse reduction. We have heat recovery co-making sun coke, which is a new system that they're using to uh, purify the coal and coke a little bit better, so it's more environmentally friendly, more efficient. That equals 322 English ordinal, 133 English reduction, 461 reverse ordinal, 155 reverse reduction. Coke will be used in green movement, which has the exact same uh, gematria, 322, 133, 461, 155, with heat recovery, co uh, uh, coke making, sun coke. So you see the connections. We are there. We're in the right spot. You know, and this is where patience comes in. All right. You buy low, you sell high. This is a great company to be in. The financials look great um, and they're making money. And there's a kicker to this on that next slide. Uh, but Suncoke Energy Inc. in Aquarius Age, 331 English Ordinal. Suncoke Energy Inc. provides quality Coke to the United States. They just provide Coke in America. It's an American-based company, 222 English reduction. So the fundamental side, the assets are about $1.67 billion. The total liabilities are $1.04 billion. The net equity right now is about $628.30 million on the positive side. That's good. Shares outstanding is uh, $83.72 million. And so my net equity minus the total liabilities fair value is about seven fifty. dollars All right. So our share cost per share right now is seven twenty five. dollars It's at sitting at, you know, seven eighty. dollars I probably won't add any more shares unless it keeps going down um, below seven fifty, dollars or if it stays in this range for a while. But I, you know, I front loaded shares to get a good start, but uh, we're staying put for now. Suncoke Energy Inc. has long term or uh, or take or pay coke making contracts with the two integrated uh, steel producers in the U.S., which are the biggest ones. We talked about them earlier. Cleveland Cliffs, United States Steel Corp. Those are the two biggest steel uh, producers, and they have long-term contracts for them. And a take or pay, it means either these companies take all the co that coke that they're con contracted for, or they, have, or they have to pay for it, that the, what they don't use. And if they don't want to use the coke, we get that coke back, and we can sell it to third parties. The contract duration is typically five to ten years, um, with a weighted average at around seven. Consumers uh, require to take all coke, like we said, to produce up to the contract maximum, or they pay what they didn't take, and we give it to other people if they don't want it. So, you know, if they don't want it, whatever. That's more money in our pocket, pocket, and they still have to pay us. And that's important. You know, these are really old companies. They're not going anywhere. Um, they make money. Even if their stock doesn't look that attractive, that doesn't mean they won't buy Coke from Sun Coke. Um, so that's awesome to see. And we have good stocks equaling 38 in English reduction, 52 reverse reduction. Then I have the ticker symbols of SXC, X, and CLF, which is uh, U.S. Steel Corp. and Cleveland Cliffs, 38. And 38 reduction, 52 reverse reduction. We love to see that. Then we have money and business both equaling 27 in English reduction. We like to see that. And then we have Suncoke Energy, Inc., Cleveland Cliffs, United States Steel Corp Corporation equaling tw uh, 270 in English reduction, which is 27 uh, when we take off that zero. So it, it goes nicely with money and business. And so the last one before we get into questions and answers and we get into, uh, you know, off top world music, uh, BHP Group Limited, BHP, it's resources, metals, mining, headquarters in Melbourne, Australia. I've been trying to diversify into international markets. PE ratio of 8.3. We love to see that. That's under the 27x uh, average. The dividend yield is 8.8%, 8.88%. That's big time. I like that. The debt to equity is uh, 0.3, uh, negative, uh, is 0.351. We like to see it under one, but two, under two for sure. So these are the things we like to see in a dividend company. And again, we're up 6% right now. And some of the uh, gematria, BHP will supply coal, 222 English ordinal. And the real name of the company is uh, Broken Hill Proprietary, 
So Broken Hill Proprietary Mining equals 333 English reduction. That's the company. That's the company. They've been around since uh, 1888. It's almost a it's it's almost a 150 years old company, if not more. Like it's a 150 year old company. It's been around a long time. It makes a lot of money for a long time. If it hasn't died, uh, if it hasn't died yet, it's probably not going to die for a long time. Melbourne, Victoria, Australia, BHP, 333 English ordinal, 132 English reduction, and uh, 453 reverse ordinal which coincides nicely with BHP stock mining, all Asian, Asian energy, like I said, um, they supply energy to Asia, 303 to English ordinal, and uh, 132 English reduction, which goes to Melbourne, Victoria, Australia, and 453 in uh, reverse ordinal. So that's good. Then we have Broken Hill proprietary stock, 137 English reduction, BHP supplies Coke to Asian markets, 133 in English reduction. And we have China coal consumption supplied by BHP stock, 222 English reduction. We love seeing that. And just a little fundamentals, the assets on hand is 87.82 billion. The total liabilities is 41.27 billion. The net equity is 46.55 billion. So that's positive. Shares outstanding. They have a lot of shares. A lot, uh, five thousand, uh, five, uh, five point oh six billion, and so you know, you look at this when I go off my base off my fair value net equity total liabilities. It, it says the stock would be at nine dollars and nineteen cents. Now there's nuance to it. All right, you know, it's sitting at sixty bucks right now, but it's a company that you don't really have to worry about. They have a lot of cash on hand. They're 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 they have more assets than liability, and so. That's fine. You know, the, my fair value calculations aren't always going to be perfect. So that's why you just have to, you know, see what it is. I'm not too worried. It's not going to ever go back down to $9 unless it, they uh, issue more shares. And they already have a lot. Again, they're in Brazil, Canada, Peru. They have uh, markets in China, India, sales and marketing offices. This is a world company. Uh, but I really like the angle where they're sitting here. And they're right next to Asia to supply them for their coal, coal on their EV push. So this is great. I think it's going to be a great company. If it gets in the low 50s, I'm going to add it again. It has a high dividend yield. So that's all I have for you guys today. I'm going to open up the floor for questions and answers. And if Off Top World has any questions or answers, um, and we can get into the music. And if you have more music, Off Top World... I'd be happy to uh, to listen to it even more um, on like just uh, personally, but the the floor is yours. Uh, I got one question. Yep. Um, how do you plan on expanding the community and growing into a larger audience? Yeah. I'm not even gonna lie. I've been coming along over here. I know, and you know what? I I understand where you're coming from. I've been trying to. So there's multiple asset, there's multiple uh, facets to the community. You know, I have my Discord. We have over 300 people in the uh, in the Discord, and it's a lot more. Uh, you know, it's a lot more active there. A lot of people talk in different channels and stuff, which I am blessed for. Um, and then when you come to the the Patreon side of things, I have it varies from 15 people to 20 people who pay for my content. And I will be honest is that I am trying to figure out a ways to funnel people into this conference call. And again, I appreciate you coming to, coming into this. Sure. And that's why I always continue to do this because I know there's people and I know for a fact if I and, and it's frustrating because I know if for a fact, if I, you know, if I take it, you know, personally and I stop doing these type of things, people are going to say, hey, why aren't you doing these type of things? It's it's more of how can I get people to this step? Um, and that's what I'm really trying to figure out right now. And so I, I feel you and I, I don't want to keep you lonely on this thing. I want, I want it to grow and I'm trying to figure out what will it be? Because I don't necessarily think it's not people making money off my, my, uh, my content because that's, that's happening. Like people will tell me all the time we're making money off the content. Maybe it's the, um, the day I'm doing it. Maybe it's the time I'm doing it. Uh, maybe I need to figure out a different sales um, aspect to uh, to get people to this step 
And so that's that's a big that's a big thing I'm trying to figure out. So that doesn't that's not uh, that's not lost on me because that's the goal. You know, I've grown the community via Discord. We have over 300 people. I have a you know 5,000 people on uh, my my YouTube channel. There's a lot of discourse there um, on those two aspects. So I'm I'm also I'm at the point now. How do I get to the funnel to here? And so I've been thinking on it. I've been meditating on it. I've been trying to find ways to make that happen. Um, so that's not lost on me. And um, if you have friends uh, that want to join the, the call without far, without charge, I will allow that. You know, I'm going to start, you know, asking people, hey, come on, come on, uh, come on, just so we can get the ball rolling. And if maybe if we can get more people on, I can do a, a, a YouTube video where it attracts more people. Like I, uh, my very first conference call that I, uh, that I, that I posted on my, my YouTube, trying to get people here. And so I understand where you're com coming from. You're lonely over there. I'm lonely over there, but we'll, we'll figure it out somehow. Um, and you know, is it, is it making even more money? That's the goal. I know people are making money now. So we'll figure it. Is it because, you know, the, you know, people are hard on times. They don't want to spend the $5 for this possibly. Um, so it's something that I'm really trying to figure out. And, uh, again, I appreciate you for taking your time out, um, uh, for, for doing this. So, um, that's not lost on me and that's why I keep doing these and I'm going to continue to do it. Even, you know, uh, if for some reason, uh, you know, you don't show up one day, that's okay. I'm not going to take that personal. This it's on to my it's my job to get people here, and so that's my responsibility. And you know I'm gonna I'm gonna do that for you, and, and we'll figure it out. Um, you know, still a relatively new thing. When I started my Patreon way back when two years ago, I didn't have any Patreon members, but I was doing my my sports documentaries over time, and so that's grown over time. Um, so we'll, we'll we'll figure it out. Um, that's not lost on me. So sure. uh, we'll, yeah, we'll, we'll figure something out, man. Mm. Well, I'm, I'm gonna stay here. I'm gonna still support. You know what I mean? Even if I don't invest, I'm still willing to learn. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Last night I had five hours of sleep, but I still showed up. Yeah, so that, you know, and I, I love that. Thank you. And these are the these are the the, the people I do it for for you. Like there's people who uh, you yeah. know watch my sports documentaries every month, and I know for a fact if if I got butt hurt or you know didn't want to continue to do it, they'd be asking where are you at, where are you at, you know. And so I have to continue to do this regardless of how it looks and stuff like that. Cause there are people that, uh, that count on this and I know that, and I can't allow outside forces or my ego to, uh, to, to, uh, deny them of the people who want to learn like yourself. Cause that'd be selfish of me, you know? And then that would be in question of why I'm doing it myself and, and, and stuff like that. And I love doing this and, you know, I'm not going to allow that to change. So it's a process, but I'm doing a lot of things. Right now, I'm. Uh, I just I got followed by somebody who has almost a million subscribers on oh, on Tutu. That. That. Um, so I'm gonna keep replying under her stuff, so I build that that trust and other financial people and stuff. So we're grinding every day on this. Like I'm not. I'm not. We're grinding. We're gonna get it. Mm -hmm. Um. And so this call is actually about to end. I don't know if did you want to just send me your music or I can start another video call. I can send you a link. And uh, uh, I send it on Discord. Okay. Uh, for Google Drive link. I'll cool, cool. You can check it out. All right. All right. All right, so, man. Okay. Off Top World, thank you again for, for popping in. Hopefully, you learned some uh, stuff. If you have any friends uh, you know, that want to pop on, man, just give them a link. And then I'll talk to a couple uh, other people just to get them in here so we can have discourse and stuff like that so we can get uh, more people, even if uh, you know they don't want to pay for the Patreon because it's not lost on me. And uh, you know, it's just you got to figure out that sales funnel, you know? So, yeah, 100%. All right, peace out. All right, peace, bro.